Welcome, welcome, welcome to Authentically Me, Postured and Positioned for Purpose. I am your host, Apostle Alisa Jackson, and I am honored to be sitting here with you this evening. Listen, today is part two of my interview with Pastor Sean Robinson here in Little Rock, Arkansas. Last week, we had an amazing, amazing interview. And today I am going to, we're going to finish that tonight, right? There was just a little bit left, but it was just so good that I did not want us to miss it. Listen, we talked about, last week we talked about the responsibility of the pastor and the responsibility of the prophet. And I think that in this day and time, those are some important things that we need to understand. And y'all, we came from Ephesians 4, and we're all so familiar with that chapter where it talks about the gifts that God gave to the body for the perfecting of the saints. And so some of the gifts that he gave were the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the uh, evangelist, the teacher, those were gifts that he gave to the body. And so a lot of times we look at these are assignments. This is our assignment. This is the mantle on my life. This is what I got to do. But when we start looking at it from the perspective of being a gift to perfect the body, then we will not only start looking at our assignments differently, but we'll start receiving the assignment differently. When we receive something as a gift, we understand that it is precious, that it is precious and it should be treated as such. And even us as the gift, we have to understand. Sometimes I, I hear people talking about how weighty and heavy the mantle is. And I think that's just because um, because of the wrestle in this flesh, you know, because of the wrestle in this flesh to get to um, the, the place of total surrender. So I think that I don't think it's that hard, but I sometimes we can make it hard. Uh, sometimes we can make it hard. And so when we start looking at ourselves as gifts, when we start looking at our brothers and sisters in the fivefold as gifts, we will begin to uh, receive things differently. We'll look at it from a whole nother view and things will manifest in a most amazing way because then we'll understand that we're all gifts from God and we'll work together and it'll be like putting a puzzle piece together. Many members, one body, and we'll all come together to unite with one purpose, and that is to spread the gospel, to fulfill the, to fulfill the purpose that God has uh, sent us here to do. So I'm really, really excited. I, y'all, uh, I truly, she, uh, Pastor Sean Robinson was my first interview, and and God said it. You know, uh, I, I'm one of those people that whatever God says. And so I really, really enjoyed the video. But one thing that I, I, I really enjoyed was her sincerity, her transparency, um, her love for people, her love for the people of God. I truly, truly, truly enjoyed her. And I hope that you all uh, did as well. We did talk about the responsibility of the pastor to look after the sheep, to guide the sheep, to love on the sheep. And so I remember, you know, y'all for years, see, I'm one of those people that I don't just go with what people say. I do a little, I like to study on my own. And so I've, I, for years, and I, people still do, I hear people saying how dumb sheep are dumb and they need, uh, they need a shepherd to guide them. Now just imagine if you were sheep, how insulting that is, right? That's very, that could be, because everybody's not there where it wouldn't be, right? And so what I when I studied on the sheep and the shepherd, sheep need guidance because they're what? Just like our children, y'all. Sheep are stubborn. So it's not that they're dumb. That's really insulting. 
they are hard-headed, which could be still insulting to some, but now it's not meant to be. It's just the reality of the situation. Um, sheep are stubborn. You know, you're trying to get them to go left. They go right. You, you're trying to nudge them this way. They want to go that way. Just like our children, those of us who have raised children, those of us who are raising children. I mean, you understand. And so, I, y'all, I learned so much from Pastor Sean, but I learned um, when I was a pastor, y'all, it was a brief, brief moment. And I know that God will have me go back at some point. But there was some processing that I had to go through. And I think we briefly discussed that last week. There were some processes that I needed to go through that were necessary. And I didn't go through those processes first. A lot of times we're called y'all and we just jump up and run like, okay, God, I just want to obey. And, and a lot of it is because we just want to obey God. Because I promise you, those who are out there are watching, there is no glitz and glamour in being a shepherd. There's no glitz and glamour in being a prophet or an apostle or a teacher. And that. There is no glitz and glamour. So a lot of times you jump up running because you just want to obey God. But what we don't understand is that we have to go through processing. So, y'all, I just realized this was, I think it was maybe last week that it was some ways that I had. And I think when I was a pastor for that uh, brief stint, that I had some ways in me that were passed down from generations, right? Things that I saw people do, that it was just conditioning me. I didn't think they were wrong, but the, it was just part of my makeup because of the generational um, paradigm that I was under. And so I went through a situation, sometimes God will allow you to go through things that break you, right? They will. I mean, it, it really did. And when it broke me, I began to look, oh, this is where this comes from. Oh, this is where you got this from. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, you know, and you shouldn't have said that. And those were things that you didn't think anything that seemed harmless, but they were generational curses that you've carried from grandma and them, great grandma and them. And so whether we want to believe it or not, if we don't do the work, those things carry on with us when we're in leadership, when we're in, when we are a pastor, when we are a prophet, when we are a pastor. So we talked about the process uh, with Pastor Sean. We also talked about if it was okay to sit down. Um, is it okay for a pastor to sit down? I would rather um, a pastor sit down than wound a lot of people, right? Uh, they say hurting people hurt people. Uh, don't bleed on the people. I think that it's okay to sit down for a moment. Get yourself together. Get a little healing. Spend some time with the Lord because sometimes you, you can get so consumed with the assignment that you forget the giver of the assignment. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Enjoy the remainder of the video. Thank you. does not mind letting you know I'm going through something and I need God to fix it. So I will have to do this. That's good. That's good. That's good. So I also know, aside from being a pastor, that you are a prophet. Now, I know, I know you're very humble about it, but um, you are accurate. I've seen it. And so the prophetic is very near to my heart. And so um, I think that it has been misrepresented in this current day and time. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, the, prof, the office of the prophet, uh, the assignment of the prophet in this season, because I've seen you, that you're accurate. And you're very humble, and I, I think hum humility is important um, when you're when you're hearing from God and speaking what thus saith the Lord. 
just a little bit about the responsibility of the prophet. I think the responsibility of the prophet is very important because you are a mouthpiece for God. And God has given you that gift to hear what he is saying for someone's future, for their life. And it gives them hope. And it lets them know God is real, you know, because myself couldn't do it. I don't just say God said, because you got to be held accountable for that. So I feel like when God has given me something to give someone, I have permission to say God said, because I heard him say it. Right. And that's why it becomes accurate, because it's from God. And I just, he gave me that gift freely. Right. So I just believe if God says speak, speak. You know, and, and I just think it's a beautiful thing that God will use us as people to be his mouthpiece. You got to value that. How amazing to. is that? It's amazing. So I think that responsibility is real. It's big because you're giving someone hope. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, yeah. and that makes me so excited to see someone get excited when they say, nobody knew that. Right. I didn't tell anybody. Right. You know, but God. But God. And so God is telling you with this prophecy, with this word, that I heard you. Yeah. And then when it comes to pass, oh my God, it's just a, I mean, it's joy like, I'm like, look at God. Yeah. Ooh, he is so wonderful. He is. It's amazing. To make someone's life better, come on, yeah. that's what God does. Yeah, that's he makes your life better. He does. So when he gives those gifts, if he give you that, you better value that. Right. And know that you're going to change someone's life yeah. forever. And I've seen that you uh, you are so accurate. And I just know that um, it, it's your humility and it's, it's your um, that you honor God and you want to please him. And so for me, how do we, if I'm a young prophet coming up, how do I not get caught up in oh I want to say like the status the and not be the cookie cutter prophet. I just think for a young prophet coming up, they just gonna have to stay humble, yeah. stay in the presence of God, and and to be reminded that it's not you, right. and God chose you for such a task. Right. So when you acknowledge that it's God first, right. and you can't worry about the height and the crowd. Jesus never followed the crowd. The crowd followed Jesus. So God said your gifts will make room for you. Yes. And if he's chosen you to do these certain things, then just take it as an honor right. and a blessing. Right. And like, wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, wow, God, you did this like, thing. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's and I amazing. just believe a young prophet coming up, you know, if they just stay humble, people are gonna say, oh, you're accurate, blah, 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 but you gotta understand, God is always accurate. God is accurate. And people know the difference, right? you know? Yeah. And you have to just know you're gonna be held accountable for saying God said it, and he didn't, and he didn't say. Right. So I don't care how close we are, I don't care who you are, if God didn't say it, I'm not gonna say it. No, ma'am, you do not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's important to stay humble and just to stay before the Lord in prayer, um, seeking his face. Yes. Seeking his face. So, I think then, I'm so excited. So, do you have anything you want to discuss with the people? Do um, you have anything for us today? I just think if God chooses you to do a task, honor it. Be grateful, your time is coming. And I would say, God knows all things. All things are possible with God. Eight years ago, I never saw myself here. And, but I heard God. People had said I wouldn't make it three months. People said I wouldn't make it a year after I made it three months. <laughs> I wouldn't make it a year. I made the year, I wouldn't make it two. So eight years later, right. and counting, and counting, I'm so honored and thankful. It's, he blows my mind every day. Yes, 
Yeah. And I'm just like, God, me, when you know who you were, and if God can use who you were, then God will make you who he wants you to be. And when you have a love for people, I want souls. I was lost. God used someone to find me. I walked in the church. Never been a member of a church. I was an adult. Had a lifestyle, but I chose Jesus 22 years ago. So I would tell whoever watching, God could use you. He know your background, he know your past, but that will not be your future. So I tell you to stay encouraged and be honored that God chose you. And sister, I'm so grateful. He saved my life. Yes. He yes. saved my life. And I don't want to go back. Right. He has forgiven me. Yes, right. So why not serve this God we serve? Right. Yes. That's what I would tell the people. Trust the process. What he begins, he will finish. Yes. He will. And so what would you say to people that think it's hard to serve God? That's hard to serve God? People think it's hard to serve God, that it's, that it's something that's not attainable. I would say I understand. Oh, yes. Yes. You're going to be keeping real over here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, people will make you think it's hard to serve God. But once you get in a relationship with God and know who God is for yourself, it becomes e easy because his burdens are light, his yoke is easy. Right. So you take that in and you then begin to feel, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. Right. He lights me up right, right now. Right now. And yes. I'm excited that you chose me to be your first person. Thank you. And I think it's an honor. Well, it's God. Yes, and I thank <laughs> yeah. him. And he knows it. Yeah, I yes. thank God. I think that I, I was I, I'm one of those people that when God say do something, I don't I don't even ask any questions or anything. I'm just like, okay, you say it's got to be. So I couldn't go another direction first. I couldn't just say, well, okay, I'll just go back back it up because I wanted to do it in May around the yes. anniversary. But God said, and so I've been processing myself, and I think that. So you know that what I went through um, as a pastor, so watching your success and watching you do it in a very unique and authentic way, that there is no pressure. There is no, oh, I gotta be like this person. And, there's no, and I think that that gives hope to me, other pastors that are coming up, because you do it in an authentic way. You're not, you're not cookie cutter. You do it as God instructs you. And so that's important to me to bring people um, that my audience can see they do it because of God. Yes. You don't do it um, for no other no other reason. And so, and your people love you. Thank God. <laughs> they, do, they do. They do love you. And I just. And I love them. And you do. Mm -hmm. And you definitely do. Yes. And so I think that that's part of that's that's part of the longevity. Because you can't pretend. You cannot. And at one time in the beginning, because it was new, mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, Lord, I can't do this. <laughs> and He said, I got you though. So He said, but you got to do it my way. I've had people that try to tell me how to do it, mm -hmm. but they didn't call me. Right. Neither did they choose me. So my heart said, follow after Christ. Do it the way God said do it so people can see the real you. Right. Because they want realness. People are broken. People are hurting. Right. And they need to know that God has someone that can relate to them and they can relate to that person. Right. And that, that does help people to see you better. I think that in this season, only the authentic will rise. In this, in this next season of whatever thing that's getting ready to transpire, that it's gonna be the authentic, the authentic voices that just want to please God and be a representative in the earth. 
And so I know that even you have helped me because when I came to you, I was a basket case. <coughs> so I forget, I know you're fine, I forget. Well, we were somewhere and I was like, look, <laughs> I just finally uh, fell apart all over me. And you grabbed my hand so sincerely. You were like, do what God is telling you what's in your heart. You didn't give me the little church answer, girl. You just hold on. <laughs> just hold on. Because I, I, I didn't need to hear that. I, need to, I, I didn't need the church answer. I needed the God answer. And so I do appreciate that. And I know that that's what people need. They need that sincerity yeah. in this season. And I know that's re the reason for so much growth. And so yes. I'm looking forward to more of these uh, interviews. I'm looking forward to like the new building. Maybe I'll be interviewing at the new building. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. As God, look, as God is expanding yes. you and um, as you're going forward in the prophetic, in the pastoral, and I'm, I'm not gonna even call the other one because you, you know how you keep but as God is elevating you, um, yes. I thank God for you. I thank God for your service. Now, one thing I do not want to miss before I before we go, you are one that serves the community, and not just because you want folks to see. You know, and really, is you don't put it on Facebook. I went over here to the um, the senior citizen home, or we went and handed out. You don't do that, but I see that you do that because I know you. And you do it consistently every week unless something major yeah. transpires. So you're really going about doing the work while it's day. You're really going for um, preaching the gospel. You're being a living example in this season. Praise God. And so that's important because to me, we don't need just another church on the corner. We need to see people reaching souls, reaching the homeless, going to see about the people that the, um, the the people that no one thinks about, and that's that's important to you because that's important to God. Yeah. It's important to God, and in this season, um, it's important. So I'm going to encourage you to keep going. Yes, ma'am. Keep going. Keep doing what you do um, as God continues to elevate you and expand you uh, for this for this mandate that's on your life. It's so big, it's so big, it's yes. so big. And I pray that he strengthens you and continues to surround you with people that will uphold their arms yes. as you go forth with the vision. Yes. So I just um, thank you for having me here at Divine. Yes, yes. It Absolutely. is an honor. Um, I think that um, we will be doing more of these. <laughs> tell, tell the people a little bit about what you have coming up that you may want to share. And can I say this? Mm -hmm. The youth. Oh, yeah. The youth make me smile. Yeah. Every Thursday, I get with the youth, the youth and myself. And they are learning that word. And they, the parents, will call or say when they see me, Pastor, they told me they learned about Jesus, da 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 da. And that makes me so happy that they're going home and telling their parents what they're learning. Right. And it's the word of God. Because they are our future. So I take that time out with them and it blesses my heart that they are learning the word at a young age. I did not get that right. at I their did. age. So for God to to put the youth together from day one. So it, it's been eight years. And just to see them grow in the word at that age, sis, it's like wonderful. So I just wanted to mention that because I want the world to know that the youth are important and they want the word. So teach them the word. And I've noticed, now tell me when you have services, because you are serious about this. Tell yeah. me, give me all these dates. <laughs> yeah, Divine said that too. Yeah. But Monday we have Facebook Live from 6.30 to 7.30. Tuesday we have Divine Prayer Line from 7.45 to 8.45. Wednesday we have Bible Study from 6.30 to 7.30. Or excuse me, 7.45.
Thursday night you 6.30 to whenever, because we go out to eat afterward. So the Fridays is Divine Women for Christ. And Sunday morning, 11 and um, until. Yeah. Yeah. So. And see, that's, that's, that's some, to me, that shows that you have sold out. I'm sold out. You are sold <laughs> out. And you keep, it's like you, the enemy don't stand a chance. <laughs> he does not stand a chance because you keep them in the face of God. And when I see you with the youth, you are excited. I am. And if y'all miss for whatever reason, <laughs> it's like when you come back together, it's like you do spring break with yeah. them and you really enjoy it. And I believe they love you. They do. And, and I have to say this, when you have a teenager call you, he could be playing his game or out with his friends. Right. He like, Pastor, are we having tea night? Right. <laughs> like, yes. Right. He's like, okay. And the days he called and I'm not having it, it's like he's lost his best friend. Right. So that that's just, I'm like, wow. Right. You know, so yeah. Right. But um, June the 20th mm -hmm. and through the 21st, we will have a women's revival here at Divine starting at 7 p.m. Okay. July the 2nd, 3rd, we have a prophetic revival of the 2nd and 3rd of July. That's what we have coming up. Okay, and I'm excited. And we're we're located where? 1000 Schiller, South, South, South Schiller in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I'm excited about everything that you have coming up. I'm excited about the youth because the youth, a lot of times we talk about what they, this generation, but you have to change the generation yes. not to talk about them. They're going to Nashville to the water park. July the 19th, and they're so excited. I know you're going. Are you yeah, going? I'm, I'm you taking them. You take so. them. And if you want to come, you know you're more than welcome. You know welcome. I sure will. Now. You're, you're more than welcome to come. <laughs> We're going to have fun that weekend. Yeah, yeah, so I just thank God for you, and I thank God for your um, being an example in the city and breaking barriers that uh, um, many haven't, and just continue to do what you do. Um, going forward, I can't wait to see what's next. Me too. I can't wait to see what is going next. <laughs> but thank you for um, taking this time out with me tonight. I appreciate you so much. And to the Authentically Me family, I will see you next week. Have an amazing week in purpose, on purpose.